I'm pleased to have the honor of introducing 2010 ASPA keynote speech, a fine scientist, an innovative manager and creator. His contribution to the field of science center is enormous. He did a remarkable job at the Exoptorium in San Francisco, as you know. We are very fortunate today to have him here for this ASPA conference. Before, oh, without further ado, let me join in introducing, welcoming Dr. Gori Delacote. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I, uh, we had a very good opening session, and uh, I sent there was some uh, jealousy between uh, Shim and Margaret, because what Shim didn't tell you, that he has a 1,500 cubic centimeter motorbike. <laughs> and when I asked him about speed, he said, you know, I've never been able to go at the speed limit. I'm always above. <laughs> that was a great introduction, and I'm very pleased uh, to be here. And I'm a special envoy of Claire, because Claire put me on a mission. She said, I want you to say things. And uh, therefore, she need to get the credit if I ever say something interesting. I'm ready to take the blame if it is not. Uh, January 91, January 91, already a long time ago, I came directly and on a wing of an eagle, if I may say, from France to take the leadership of the Exploratorium in San Francisco. Uh, Exploratorium, by the way, it, the first contradiction I saw there was that Exploratorium was hosted in a very strange place. Uh, it was a sort of ruin. Uh, Bernard Maybeck had built that building uh, in 1915, and according to a French architect, Mr. Perret, architecture is what makes beautiful ruin. And in that case, it was true. It had become a ruin. It had become a ruin. So, but learning is what prevents the mind to be ruined. So I was going into a place to try to promote learning in an environment which was designed to become a ruin. So I was already feeling the contradiction, and from that contradiction, I got a lot of energy. Because when you see the tension between those kind of things, you... The situation was bleak in 91. You may, may remember, not almost as bleak as now in the US. Economy was bad. Oppenheimer, my predecessor, the physicist, was playing with bomb. It died uh, with, with his brother, Robert Frank. It died five years before. And uh, the, the, there was an interim director between Oppenheimer and me and didn't work out. <coughs> It would have been very, very hard just to come and be a follower of Oppenheimer. It was very difficult. And 10 people had been laid off. And therefore, I said, well, the task may not be easy. So I thought, I need a strategy. I thought about the strategy, and I said, mm -hmm. that seems to be an interesting strategy from day one. And the strategy was to say, OK, it's a learning place. So how do you learn? You learn through experience. Well, fine, we're going to develop something on that. Uh, you learn through conversation, and we're going to do something on that as well. And you, know, you see that already through experience, that means that you are doing a marketing approach by saying, 
well, the expense you can offer to the people coming through the gate. So you have already an audience here. So conversation, when you start, you can do that through using the internet. 91 internet was not totally ready. It really start in 95, and we really developed you know, website there. But that was the second element of the strategy, learning through expense, learning through conversation, and the third component was to say, well, we, in order to promote learning, we have to help people promoting learning, teachers, educators. So here was the strategy, very simple, both on a concept base, on a marketing base, and I organized the place into three centers, center for exhibitions, a center for uh, media and communication, and a center for teaching and learning. So I thought, oh, it's good, I'm happy to work that way. It's only a few, after a few years that I added a fourth dimension, which I believe is important when you are in a place which is doing research and development, which I was a part of the Explorer term and I wanted to take that on. You have to find a way of sharing. That's one of the titles of this uh, seminar, Share, Learn, Grow Together. Uh, sharing the resources and what we were able to develop with other people. Co-develop, bring people from the outside and do that together. And uh, what we have developed, we bring that with hopefully good business model, which is not too expensive and bringing the people together. So that was three plus one. Fine. But the Exploratorium was a mystery to me, still, especially in the early years. Of course, after that, it became a miracle. It was a mystery. It, it took me a long time, a long time, uh, to discover that the Exploratorium was much more than the sum of its parts then much more than the addition of the individual talents, much more than the frugal, frugal, very, very frugal, and fiscally responsible. Of course, you have to be like that organization, trying to empower, educate, entertain. It was much more than that. So I would say it took me two years to start to understand. And I discovered then, I saw that what I was doing was not m managing such an institution or an institution. I was managing a culture. So, <laughs> in management lessons, it's very rare that one tells you you are going to manage a culture. So what sort of culture was it? Well, I had to find a name for that. And I called that culture a culture of learning, because it's about learning. It's about empowering, educating, entertaining, but the core of what we do is about learning. And what I understood is that what the ta staff does is to share that culture with the public, to bring the public into the culture and benefit from the input of the public into culture. Museums are co-created. The culture comes from this co-creation. And my role as a leader was to help the staff to share that culture, and therefore myself to share with the staff and my executive team in the same way. So it was a global process of what one could call acculturation. It was a cultural endeavor. <laughs> 